Good afternoon, everyone. Kambali Volcano in Kamchatka Peninsula, Russia. Beautiful, unexpected eruption. First eruption in 248 years, yet most violent eruption in 600. Plumes above 26,000 feet. In John Casey's new book, Upheaval, he details increases in volcanism and earthquakes at the bottom of grand solar minimums. We are entering one right now. This takes us back 600 years. And you'll notice the VEI 6 and 7 right at the bottoms as well of these solar minimums. Unexpected events 7,000 years ago. Intense cosmic ray bombardment. While you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030. I'd like to give a big shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Over on Ice Age Now, Robert Felix's site, although the reports of an increase in 1769 of this exact same volcano on the Kamchatka Peninsula, image here on the map, far right, orange dot, eastern Russia, Kambalny Volcano, incredibly stunning. This landscape, unbelievably beautiful, unexpected eruption out of nowhere. No prequakes, it just woke up. 250 years, awakened volcano. This is a major eruption. There was a smaller eruption, that 250 year mark, but the last major volcanic activity 600 years ago. This one's going to be pulling up way into the VE5 when it's finished. Already ash up to 26,000 feet. That's going to continue to go up another couple kilometers. The intensity seems to be ramping up. March 25th, visible from space, coming off the furthest southern point of Kamchatka there. Sulfur dioxide brightness index. You can see the ash plume. Bit closer in here with Terra Modis satellite. I like how Siberian Times also has an amazing photo talking about since the reign of Catherine the Great. And they're still really unsure how this event's going to unfold because it was such an unexpected eruption. Here's some more images for you. I'm going to bring you right over to John Casey's new book, Upheaval. Specifically, a correlation of past catastrophic earthquakes with these grand solar minimums. Now, if we go back 600 years from now, that'll take us right back to the 1400s era and you notice that massive quake at 1450. This follows right into the grand solar minimum bottom and entering this type of mini ice age when we have these quakes and increased volcanism. Different look here in correlation of sunspot numbers with mega quakes and volcanic eruptions in the six and seven intensity range. And you'll notice right away that they all occur at the troughs of our solar activity. We are entering one of the steepest troughs in the last 400 years as we speak. And Bismiani volcano also erupting, active volcanoes across the world. 14 continuing, three new active volcanoes. Now we need to add this plus another underwater volcano off of Japan. From this report, explosive volcanic eruptions triggered by cosmic rays. So nine of those last 11 vents, inactive phases of solar magnetic activity. This is a perfect inverse, depending on the intensity of the sun at solar max or solar minimum or grand solar maximum or grand solar minimum. And also with every grand solar minimum, cosmic rays increase. Bit closer in on the chart for you to take a look at as well. And these eruptions that occur during the grand solar minimums are silica rich magma, which means islands of Japan, get ready. There's an underwater eruption that just started as well, we'll be coming across the newswire right now. It's actually offshore of Tokyo. And as this unfolds, I'm going to get another story out to you. Also talking about unexpected mysterious solar events 7,000 years ago 5480 BC using carbon 14 out of tree rings 
and bristle cone pine forests in California, these thousand year old trees are used as a proxy to show the intense cosmic ray bombardment. There were massive eruptions at that time as well. These two are overlapping and we're going to do another grand solar minimum. And suddenly the volcanic explosivity index is taking an uptick, unusual weather patterns, and we're still talking about CO2. We really need to get ready for this grand solar minimum and the effects it's going to have on our society and our food production. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And I'll bring you more information on the underwater rumblings off of Tokyo in the next video.